Again, uh, we appreciate all the mothers who came and uh, all of you. Uh, some of you might be future mothers, and uh, we, oh, we highly respect our mothers because they're the one who uh, used by God to uh, nurture us, to uh, love us. And um, I was, rem uh, I remember that, that quote, uh, it's a Jewish quote that uh, it says, uh, God could not be everywhere, so he created mothers. And yes, we know that God is omnipotent. He is omnipresent. He, he's present everywhere. But the love of a mother, especially a Christian love, shows that God's presence is with them. Anyway, I'd like to uh, uh, point out uh, this time our lessons in uh, the life of Timothy. Uh, we're in um, his mother and grandmother. Louise and Eunice uh, had been a mighty instrument uh, used by God for him to become who he is, a mighty man of God. And so I'd like to invite you all to, to uh, open your Bibles on uh, Acts chapter 16. And um, we'll go from 1 to 5. And uh, at the same time, we'll be reading 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. In connections to our upcoming camp, which is Thrive, uh, prior to this, we were talking about how we can incorporate the title and how we can, at the same time, celebrate the motherhood and uh, how we can uh, instill this truth in the minds of the people and how, at the same time, we can, be, uh, we can learn a lot, of things, a lot of things from here. So uh, just to give you a little background of what happened here, Paul came to also to live uh, to Derbe and to Lystra. Verse 1 of Acts chapter 16. And a disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but whose father was a Greek. Well, uh, during this time, there has been persecutions among Christians and Jewish uh, chosen people of God. And they were scattered um, in Europe and Asia and you know, and, and so many parts in, in the Middle East and, um, and in this part, uh, th this time actually is the part of modern day Turkey, you know, which is in the Europe area. Uh, however, I would like to point out that the main point or idea here is that God uh, in his mighty uh, power and grace really look for people who, who had been a, um, whom he can use, I rather I, I should say, whom he can use and he can show his uh, work and how he can use even a Gentile, just like, uh, actually Timothy is half Gentile. He is Jewish and Gentile. At the same time, his father is a Greek, although hindi na point out dito kung buhay ang tatay o patay. And... Uh, but historian says that his father was patay na siya, da, dead na. So, Louise and Eunice, ginamit isila ng Diyos, ang nanay niya at ang lula niya to nurture him, to educate him, to train him, to become who he is. In the Old Testament, uh, education plays a big role in, in, in a community of Jewish believers. And the chosen people of God. Remember the Shema? Uh, here, o Israel, the Lord is uh, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Habang bata pa sila, yun na yung, pina, yun na yung orientations ng mind nila, ang teaching. And it's important that the word of God is remains in their hearts and in their minds while young. And so, as you can see, Luis and Eunice are fully acquainted of what they're doing. They know the scripture. They know, they know the word of God. If you look at it, even in, uh, in the book of Proverbs, it says that you need um, to put wisdom as a priority. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And nurture your children. Delight yourself in the Lord. And all of those promises and all those commands. Find wisdom. 
the kind of wisdom that are experiential, the kind that, in a way that you will experience God in your life. So, from here, they are, we are being encouraged to thrive, to train, especially mothers. And uh, actually, this is a distinct kind of uh, a story here because a mother and a grandmother, sila ang ginamit ng Diyos upang turuan si Timothy. Hindi ibig sabihin ng tatay walang responsibilidad na magturo sa kanilang mga anak. Talks about, of course, still the same. Father, do not provoke your children. Later on, there's a verse in there. Na, do not provoke your children, but rather bring them up in the nurture and discipline. So both the father and the mother, or the grandmother or grandfather, kung Christian sila, they play a big role when it comes to nurturing the children or uh, training them up in the nurture of the Lord. The main idea here is that Christian education should start at home. And Christian parents and guardians must strive to learn and teach the word of God. That's the main idea. Well, let us take advantage of our homes. Let us look at this as an avenue where we can train, teach, educate our children. But there's a question. What if our house or ako lang ang krisyano sa buo sa loob ng bahay namin? Tatay ko, nanay ko, hindi sila krisyano, ang aking mga kapatid. What if ganun ang inyong, ganun ang situation mo? How can we take advantage of that? Well, it, hindi man pwede na mangyari sa loob ng bahay. But we can find spiritual parents. Actually, Apostle Paul is uh, Timothy's spiritual father. He called him son in the faith. We can, we can look for people who can nurture us, who can encourage us, who can bring us to the Lord who can lead us to understanding the Word of God, who can pray for us, who can motivate us. Those are the things that we can do if our parents are not Christians, if our circle of influence are not Christians. We have friends, we have brothers, we have people around us. And what if they are Christians? The church is a primary tool also to educate you, to teach you, to train you to become the person God wants you to be. But given that, given that you are a Christian, you are a father, you are a mother, if you are a lolo and lulan, if you are a Christian, take advantage of every possibilities that you can teach your children, your apo, o kung sino man sa bahay niyo. Grab that opportunity. But first thing first is that you need to train yourself. Kung hindi mo alam at kilala ang Biblia, o hindi, uh, Christiano ka pa, pero... Hindi, hindi pa malalim ang kaalaman mo sa salita ng Panginoon, you need to really dig in deeper to the Word of God. That is your role as a parent. That is your role as a grandparents. That is your role as a mentor. That is your role as someone who is accountable, accountable with another. Kinakailangan po yun. Sino ang nag-influence sa'yo? Who is looking after you spiritually? Who is praying for you? Who is that person letting you know, I pray for you, encouraging you? So remember that Christian uh, uh, Louise and Eunice, they are a devoted believer. They are uh, fully acquainted of the instructions of God to them. Let me go on to the first point. It's very important to take note that in, our, in, in a way that we educate our children, early preparation is crucial. Sa so, paanong pamaraan natin tinuturuan sila, kaya na kailangan po na maintindihan natin kung paano sila mag-grow at kung paano natin ipasok ang katotohanan sa kanilang puso't isipan. Are you grateful for your parents today who lead you to the Lord? Are you grateful for someone who leads you to the Lord that the reasons why you're here and you're faithful doing the things that matters in this world? Acts 16, 11, uh, 6, 1 and 2, sabi dito, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer. Meaning, that's, that's the kind of faith that everyone, ch every children, youth, to emulate or copy the, 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 the faith of the fathers, the faith of their mothers. Kinakailangan po yun. 
Sabi dito ni Edith Dean, sabi niya, Louise and Eunice were known by the Apostle Paul for their true and faint genuine trust in God. The faith they possessed was an ever-present indwelling force in their lives. By their example and teaching, these Jewish women prepared Timothy, Eunice's son, to receive that same convictions of the existence and providence of the Creator God. You as a parent, you must know who God is. You as a father, you as a mother, you as a lola, you as a lolo, you need to know who God is. Because when you know Him, you will have the confidence to pass the message to anyone that you want to share the gospel with, to, to your apo, to your children. That's very important. And so, here are things that we can ask ourselves. How do I influence my son? How do I influence my daughter? How do I influence my cousin? How do I influence this, this person in my life? In a way that we can... In a way that we can take advantage of this truth is that it's important that our lives are committed also to our in, in devotion, in our personal and quiet time with the Lord. If you have til- children, kung may ba- bata pa sila, take advantage of those. Pero paano kung medyo malaki na sila at matitigas ang ulo? Do not give in to them. I mean, do not give up to them, with them rather, I should say. Wag, wag po tayo mag-give up sa kanila. We need to love them and pray for them and offer them to God. Take every opportunity when you are together in your table, in your sofa, in your inside the house. Take for a moment to to talk to your son, to your daughter. Anak, alam mo pinagpipray kita. Anak, mahal na mahal kita. Alam mo dinadala kita sa Panginoon. Alam anak, ano anong pangangailangan mo? Anak, anong paano kita ma-encourage? You need to build that relationship with your children in order for you to know where they are in God. Napakahalaga po yun. Kung naging lax po tayo sa ating relationship sa ating mga anak, perhaps we are lax also with our relationship with God. We don't really care at all. And so this is a, this is a period that we need to know that our example is very important. That our children, oh, my father really, pag sa umaga nakita ko nagbabasa ng Bible. Ang nanay ko ganit doon din. Lagi akong pinagpipray. Lagi akong, anak, nagtitext sa akin ito, ganito ganyan. And that's a good thing because you will know the effect because of your faith to your children. If you are a spiritual mom, if you are a spiritual father, kung ikaw ay spiritual kuya, spiritual ate, be also an example. To anyone na dinidisciple mo, pinagpipray mo, where you convey the message of God. During those times, when, when a kingdom rose against another kingdom, pag natalong isang kingdom, ang gagawin nila, for example, ang Israel, natalo sila ng ibang ng mga pagan nations or pagan kings. Ang gagawin sa kanila, kukunin nila ang pinaka mga, yung mga bata pa. Yung mga, usually sa mga royal families. And what they're going to do with it is they brainwash the child. They brainwash the children. Now, paano nila i-brainwash yun? Kung ang Jews nila, papalitan nila ng Pagan names. Okay? Papalitan ng pagan names. Tapos, i-educate nila ng kanilang mga turo doon. Ganun ho yun. Pati sa pagkain, sa panamit, sa pananaw ng mga bagay at sa paligid nila. Gagawin at gagawin nila. Everything possible na ang affection ng isang bata ay malapit sa isang hari. Ganun at gagawin nila. Ganun din po tayo. The, the reasons why we teach our children, the reasons why nagpapagal po tayo and we are giving so much time in conveying to them Teaching them the word of God is for them to become like Jesus. Ganun ho yun. That's the top priority as a mother, as a father. How do you influence your child? You as a mother, you as a father, we as parents. I'm not a parent yet, but every one of us, perhaps we have that desire. Remember this. Talk to God your desires for your children. It is very important that you take note on what they want in life. If God is not present, you are, ne- you are not achieving anything. Kung nakikita mo ang mga anak nyo na, ay anak, ano gusto mong marating sa buhay? Pag, pero pag missing si God doon, that's the time that you need to act out. You need to make them sure that they prioritize God 
sa buhay nila. Napakalaga ho yun. This is what uh, this is what uh, Eunice did to Paul. He was a firm believer with a, with a woman. Is a woman. She's a woman with a genuine faith. That she is far more concerned of Timothy and what he will become in the process. Remember Timothy. He became a pastor. He is a young pastor. He is given his life at a young age for the ministry. Paano ngayon ang buhay ko? Medyo matanda-tanda na ako. Pwede pa kayo mag-serve? Yes, you can. Wala namang pinipili ang Diyos eh. It's not always too late for you to make a decision to give your life to God as a young person, as a child, or you as a parent, that you will dedicate your life for the rest of your time that I will study the Word of God in order for me to bring my children to God and for them to be closer to Him. Ganun po yun. That's the, that's, the, that's the cause, or that's, that's really the reasons why we need to prepare. And the, the way we prepare, we start as soon as possible. That should be our prime desire if we want to help people, or especially our loved ones, bring them up in the nurture of the Lord. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go so that when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's Proverbs. That's a wise saying. Coming from the wisest man who ever lived, saying, train up a child, nurture them, because it's crucial because the day na marating nila, ang panahon na yon, na maging matigas ang ulo nila, mahirapan na sila. Ecclesiastes 12, 1, remember your creator in the days of your youth so that when the evil days come, he will say, I have no pleasures in them. It's the way it goes. It's the way na dapat i, um, ang gagawin ho natin. So as, as Eunice and Luis thrive to train Timothy, this is our call. This is, our, this is the will of God for the rest of us who, has, who have that willingness to pass on the message to anyone. And secondly, we have three points here. Exposure to the ministry is, mu- is a must. Kinakailangan may exposure din po tayo sa ministry. Acts 16, 3-5, sabi ni Paul, Paul, uh, Paul wanted this man to go with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those parts where they all knew that his father was a Greek. Now while they were passing through the cities, they were delivering the decrees which had been decided upon by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem for them to observe. So the churches were being strengthened in the faith and were increasing in number daily. So Paul's desire is to bring Timothy because of his faith. Because wa, ang, ang kanyang pananaw at ang kanyang paniniwala ang siyang tutulong sa kanya kung nandun na siya sa ministry. Yes. Yun ho yun. Education. Why is it is a must that we expose our children or anyone to the ministry? Bakit napakahalaga ho yun? Tayo. Nagsimula tayo elementary or preparatory, kindergarten, elementary, high school, then we go to college. Then after college, we go to take our master's. And after that, what else? Doctorate. Lolo na pagkalabas, no? We studied for nine years. And so, really, it takes a longer time. But remember this, kung yon ang gusto nating marating sa ating mga anak o kakalala, kaibigan, kung sino man yan, remember this, don't hinder them in the ministry. Let them think over and over again that when you study, don't forget to study God or study the Word of God. That's, that's, that's a prime a rule of our Christian example of our Christian uh, education. Huwag po natin hadlangan ang pakay natin para sa ating mga kabataan. Like now, we have an upcoming camp. Who among you here who wants to, to, to send your children to the camp? Who among you here? We have an upcoming camp 23 to 26. Are you aware that we have a camp? It's only 2,500. Kung nagsisave kayo para sa inyong mga bata, sa mga anak nyo, pupuntang mag, uh, kung saan mag-leasure sila, 
What is 2 5 for the camp? To be for them to be trained and be nurtured to become a, an effective disciples of Jesus. Expose them to the ministry. Encourage them. We have VBS and we are grateful for the parents, for the guardians who sent their children to be here and be nurtured for God. We are eternally grateful for that because habang bata pa sila, napakahalaga yun at hindi na nila makakalimutan sa paglaki nila. Napakahalaga ho yun. I have some friends who grow up in a VBS and I thank God that during those times ang VBS nakakatulong. What if camps, uh, concerts, or any Christian events, in any way that we can expose them to the ministry, do it. Make sacrifices for your children in matters of ministry. Paul wanted Timothy to, to, be, to, to join in the ministry with him. Because napakalaki at napakalawak ng gawain. And the Lord added them an, a, a huge number. Imagine if we gather together and bring those people because they felt that they are being supported because they knew that this is very important. Yun po yun ang point doon. Anak, mas mahalaga ho ito. Para sa Panginoon to, ito po yun. At doon ka dapat. Kung pinagpapadala tayo sa mga concerts, minsan pumapasok pa tayo sa mga concerts na hindi pa kristyano. No? nag invest po tayo sa mga ilbang bagay. How much more on the things of God? Make that as a priority. Expose your children, your loved ones, anyone for the gospel's sake. That's how it is. That's the way they prepare Timothy and Paul eventually sees that, sees his heart and his willingness to be a part of this great task. As 16, sabi niyan, Paul wanted Timothy to go with him. Paul is one of the greatest apostles during this time. And as we can see, he desired Timothy to go with him. Who among you here who would like to join your pastors in the ministry? So Lloyd, Pastor Mac, samahan kayo namin sa ministry. Meron bang ganyan? Wala eh. Now what if, oh, Pastor Lloyd, andyan kami, pupunta kami, we'll join sa ministry. Okay, let's go. Never pa may nagpunta ang ganyan. Ay, may guru, meron na, pero nakalimutan ko lang. But you know what? It's good that we do that. Alright? Let's join in the battle. Let's join in the ministry. Come to Youth Life Student Center to win witness with the students. Encourage us too, as your leaders, as your servants. We need to work together for, for this purpose. We will achieve a lot of things in life. Hindi lang po nakasalalay lahat ng ito sa amin. We need to work together because without you guys, without you people, it would be hard for us to, to do this. Baka mamamatay na lang kami nang hindi walang ano. But we need you people. We need to work together just like Paul's desire for Timothy to join him in the ministry. And imagine what can we do for this. So that's how important it is. And 1 Samuel 3 verses 1 to 4, remember the boy Samuel? When he was chosen to be a minister before the Lord under Eli. It's a priestly duty. Habang bata pa lang siya, andun siya sa loob ng templo at nagsisilbi na. Ganun po ka, ganun po ka dedika, dedikado ang, ang ministry ng ang, 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 ang ministry ng mga priest doon at that time. And so, it is important that we don't give in to other things except on the things that really matters. Darating at darating ang panahon na ang mga nanay kukontrahin ang mga anak, ang anak kukontrahin ang mga parents. We're in the last days at may mga pangyayaring ganun. Hindi magandang relationship between parents and children. Malayo ang kanilang affection sa isa't isa. Makita man o hindi, walang problema. Kaya maraming mga bata ngayon napakalat-kalat sa, uh, sa paligid natin. Pagpasok mo ng jeep, doon may naghihingi ng ano. Tapos may, may mga nagda-drugs doon, mga bata pa. Where are their parents? Kawawa, hindi yun ba? What about our ministry with children? These are top priority also because they will become adults someday. And how do we influence them will someday affect the community. You and I have a big role in this. To do everything possible to achieve that. Expose them to the ministry. And don't be afraid if you send your children to missions or to any local ministry orientations and all of that, do it. Okay? We have an upcoming come, send your children, send your youth 
to the camp. And don't be afraid because that's, that's a noble task for them to be a part of. This is what Paul is doing and Timothy. You see, verse 5, so the churches were being strengthened in the faith and were increasing in number daily. All you need is a faithful servant. All you need is someone who will go to war with you. And the Lord will strengthen everyone in the faith and will increase the church. Tendance, number, baka puno-puno na tayo dito. If we work together for this purpose. Baka na carried away na tayo sa mga gawain sa labas. Sa mga gusto nating marating, marami tayong pangarap sa buhay. Gusto nating yumaman, gusto natin tayong maging successful. But are you successful with God? How far do you know Him? How deep is your understanding of God? Do you regularly talk of God to your children? To your friend or anyone whom you can be an influence with? How often do you do that? The moment that you or this matter becomes your priority, things will change. Change is coming in our church. Remember that. One thing also for you to become a part of us, let us know your intention. Be known. Know what you want to happen. These are practical guidelines that you can do if you want to be. Wag kayong mahiya. Wag po kayong maging open sa amin. Uh, maging open po kayo sa amin. You can talk to us. Our office is open when you need it. You can text us. For example, we have a we have a sister na nasa hospital and she's been there for 20 days. You know, di nalaman ang aming mga numbers ay bago na. Tika na tinitext text kami. Hindi, wala kami minatanggap dahil bago na ang aming number. And she's been there in the hospital for 20 days. And we visited her and then we prayed for her and she was crying, Pastor, tinitext po kayo namin, wala pong may sumasagot. Our number is in the yellow page in there, in the program. If you want us to come and pray for you, encourage you, baka kung may discouragement kayo, Pastor, pasaway ang anak ko. Pag-pray mo naman. Gagawin at gagawin ho namin yun. Pastor, ito ang problema ng mga amin sa mga ano, be how we can restore and help you, encourage you. How we can counsel you and offer strength and the word of God to encourage you to, to, to do more. I mean, just to be patient in all things. We all share the same struggles. We are all family here. We're individuals who are under grace. We are individuals who are saved by grace. And how, who else can we what else can we do to encourage one another to be part of this greater task that, wanted, that God wanted us to do? So expose children to the ministry. That's a must. Wag niyo pong hayaan. Take note on that. We announce the events. We announce the ministry dito sa church. Join also sa prayer meeting. Okay? Join guys sa prayer every Wednesday, 6.30. Join us. Minsan pumupunta dito, 10, 20, 30. Ang pinakamarami, almost 100. Praise the Lord for that. Only lang kung may mga reviewees. But we encourage everyone to come and pray. Because that's part of your responsibility and your ministry. And that's the thing that you need to love if you care for people. You need to pray for them. We can pray for together. We can ch chat here. We can have coffee. We can have do and this and that. And pastor... Here's the problem. Here's the concerns. Here's one. Here's one. Here's the, here's, this is something that I need to pray about for. Those are just simple things. Yet you need to do it. We need to be transparent to one another. We have failures. We have problems. But we can do something out of this. So that's how we expose each other to the ministry. That's how we, that's how we value the more ang ating relationship at ang ministry. So education plays a big important, uh, plays a big role sa atin. And spiritual education is very important. Take note also, ano ang nagpapalayo sa anak nyo, sa Panginoon? Tinuruan ko na, pinagpipray ko na, ganito pa din ang ginagawa sa buhay. Inaagaw ng mundo. Maraming masamang influence siya. Perhaps ang circle of influence is 
iba o iba um, ginagamit na lang nakafocus na lang sa gadgets o sa ano mong ibang bagay try to discipline don't be afraid to discipline your children also habang bata pa sila make sure that you take note on what's important give them time discipline and gather ideas facts education to train them na magiging matuto sila kung ano nilang dapat gagawin kung desperate ka na come and how we can be an encouragement to you and provide you wisdom in that so exposure to the ministry is a must. And thirdly, evidence of faith is to be seen. Second Timothy 1.5 For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Louise and your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it is in you as well. So Paul sees this, that Timothy had a sincere faith influence ng mama at ng lola. Grabe yan, no? So, it's a genuine kind of faith. It's a sincere kind of faith that he observes. Makita mo ba ang faith sa iyong anak? Nakita mo ba ang, uh, kung paano nila ini-exhibit ang pananampalataya nila? In what ways do you observe your children showing their faith? Now, I was listening to the, to the worship team, and one of them shared, a, shared, shared their testimony. And one said, I was blessed, Pastor, because I was listening to this uh, woman. He, he shared he being, she's having problems, and may problems sa anak niya. Kailangan ng dugo. Ang ganito, ganyan, pangailan, financial. I, I, I overheard sa phone. And then, you know, I was, I was saying, Lord, Help me what to do. Help me what to do. And to make the story short, he lent out his money for the lady who is in need. And after they got out, she was very thankful. She was very thankful. I was really blessed by that testimony. And parang na-encourage yung nanay, lalo na ang bata niya. You know what? In that situation, it shows the faith that is rooted. And it reflects where it's coming from. Nakita niyo ba yun? It reflects where it's come, kung saan ang galing yung faith na yun. Sino nag-influence you to be, to be the person who got, who that really, uh, it shows your faith and, and God in your life. Si Paul sabi niya, for I am mindful. Meaning he thinks of it. He thinks Timothy's faith. Grabe, no? Kasi the moment makita mo ang faith ng isang tao, may encourage ka eh. No, lalo na sa, parang tao is always positive. Rather than, may magagawa ang Diyos. Mas maganda pa yung samahan mo yung tao nagsasabi, may magagawa ang Diyos. Kaysa na parang nagsasabi na lang, wala na. Wala nang ganito, wala nang ganyan. Uwi na tayo. But when you are with a person who encourages you to grow and be strengthened in your faith, go with that person. One thing is that, one who will lead you, especially, to God. Be encouraged. For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you. A strong foundation of faith are essential means to start educating your child to Christ. How do you nurture your faith? Are you a woman of faith? Are you a man of faith? What is faith in the first place? Faith is the evidence of things we hope for and the evidence of things not seen. We believe that God is able to do something out of our situation. We believe that God is doing something. We believe that God will accomplish all of this. And we believe that everything works together for the good of everyone. And for His glory. Who, that's, that's just the way it is. That's what faith do, can do sa life po natin. So Paul is really mindful of Timothy's faith. And the reasons why you're doing the ministry, why you're, why you're doing this and that, it is all because of your faith and love towards God. That's the main point. That's the whole idea why we're doing this. It's all because we love God and we need to show and reveal this to the people. Our children, our our relatives, our friends, or singular circle of influence. Pwede na sa office mo. In any way that you can exhibit your faith. 
in your prayers, in your devotions, in your giving, in the way that you care for the people, in the way that you sacrifice for the people. Remember this. Your faith shows. Your faith shows. And God will reward that. God honors that kind of faith. And this is the time that we need to show our faith. This is the time that they say this is an age of faithlessness. Kulang sa pananampalataya ang mga tao ngayon. Maniniwala na lang sila kung may makikita sila. Maniniwala na lang sila kung may mararating. Sometimes, we need to get rid of those and trust the Lord that He will do something. When we visited the hospital, really people seem to be losing hope. But we need to encourage the people, Lord, you know, you know this is, God is able to do something out of your situations. And they, it revives their faith. It revives their desire to, to, be, to be happy. Lord, thank you that despite of this, you are there for us. And so that's the evidence of faith na kinakailangan makita sa ating mga, sa mga mahal natin sa buhay. Si yung ating mga anak o sino man. Napakahalaga po yun. And so, not only that, we, we find that at the early age is a crucial thing to, to read that we need to do to, to make sure that we educate the people that we love and care. And for now, kung wala, kulang pa kalamon sa Panginoon, you need to disciple yourself first. You need to really, Lord, I want to know you more. I cannot teach my child. Hindi ko pa ano, hindi pa ako settled sa love ko sa iyo, Panginoon. Do that. You need to first thing first deal with yourself and your relationship with God. Na, and then after that, you are able to teach. Because the moment you feel the love of God, it would be easy for you to convey the message. And that's the thing that you need to do. It takes time. It takes responsibilities at grabe ang gagawain natin. But really, it's rewarding. And I appreciate those mothers who gave their time for their children to train them and teach them. And someday, some of here may become pastors. Some of here will become missionaries, Christian educators, counselors, and anyone. Or you can be a successful person outside in the business or who you are, but you are known for your faith, and that's a good thing. Whatever they do, you work in the hospital, you work in a business, you work, you travel, wherever you are, as long as there are people observing you, faith must be evident. Faith must be evident. Baka sampung taong ka na, hindi ka pa kilala, isang Christian may problema sa pananapalataya mo. So that's, that's, a, that's a question. So remember, faith and the evidence of faith must be seen. And so we need to exercise that daily. So this is what Paul is doing and seeing in, uh, on, on the part of Timothy. And to really encourage him that I see this faith in you, that I am mindful of this. I see this in your mother and your grandmother. And sabi niya, for these reasons, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God. So beautiful words coming from Paul to Timothy. And I hope this encourages us, mothers, fathers, to try to train your children. Try first on yourself. And when you're in that, you're good, pass on the message to your children. Gather them, pray for them. Kung hindi nyo pa nagawa, i-gather nyo mga anak nyo, gather ang mga mahal nyo sa buhay, manalangin tayo. Sa ngayon, ipagalob natin ang ating bahay, manalangin tayo sa Panginoon. Let this be an instrument, let this be a ven- an avenue that we prioritize God in our table. Baka sa pagkain natin, hindi na tayo nagpipray o nahiya na tayo magpray. We need to really do that. We need to do as possible, uh, prioritize that. Because that will eventually affect the people around you. Here's the reflection. Let God be the supreme teacher in our household. And may we all submit to His will by not giving up on our children or anyone under our care. May we all thrive to learn the things of God as the days fast approaching. Let us pray that every parent and children will be united in the things of God and so to prepare for them uh, to prepare them for a greater task ahead. Napakalawit, napakadami pang dapat nating gawin. This is the time that you need to start nurturing your children, influence them for God. So let us be united as a family to pray for one another and lift up God in our families.
I thank God for all the mothers. I thank God for all the lolas around here and even the fathers who gave yourself in teaching the children. Keep doing that. Keep influencing them. And if you're not and you're may pagkukulang pa, dagdagan pa natin. Let us pray.